All right, in the first step of the geovisualization project, you are going to be using Google Earth Studio. So here you have to make sure that it says Google Earth Studio and nothing else. This is what it should look like. And you may need to request permission to sign up to use it. In the past, you needed to. I'm not exactly sure where things stand on that right now. Um, but it was a pretty easy ask for permission using your UAA Gmail account to do that. Um, while using this, it's useful sometimes to have Google Earth Chrome running. So here's another tab that shows Google Earth Chrome. And the first way that you can use Google Earth Chrome to help you out is to first find out where there is good three-dimensional imagery to use in Google Earth Studio. So if you click over here on the Voyager button, and then you scroll down just a little bit, um, you will see a place right here where it says layers. Sorry, I went too far. Click on layers and then scroll down a little bit and you will see this button for 3D imagery in Google Earth. Click on that and what you are going to see here is you're going to see all these little yellow lines that are circled around um, different parts of the world that have what is called structure for motion 3D imagery in them. And a lot of them are urban areas, so you can find urban areas, and there are a lot, for example, very cool European cities to look at. Uh, but if you're interested a little bit more in some of the natural things, you can find um, good natural areas as well. Um, mountains and national parks, not all of them, but a lot of them have the structure for motion imagery in it. So this you can use for reference later on if you need to, but most importantly right now, just to find that th good 3D imagery right there. So now we want to go back to Google Earth Studio and we want to uh, produce our first movie. You have to produce two movies for this, but the first one you're going to do something really basic. So it'll be pretty easy to do. You're going to go to blank project and click on the down button over here, and you're go going to choose a quick start to do this. And for the quick start, you can choose a couple of different things to do. You can zoom, you can orbit, you can do a point to point, um, or you can spiral in. And I'm going to choose the spiral. There might be some more as well. There's a fly to an orbit as well, but I'm just going to do the spiral one right now. And I'm going to go ahead and say start. And now you have to choose a place that you're going to go to. And this is, again, where Google Earth can come in useful. You can search for places that you want to see. Um, but I am going to go to the Chateau Frontenac, which is located in Quebec City. There's some good imagery for that and for Quebec City as a whole. It's sort of a cool place, so I, I thought I'd choose that. Um, once you've found it, there'll be a little target that's placed over it, depending on which of these you're doing. And then you can click the arrow to go to the next phase, and it's going to show you what Google Earth Studio is doing here. That's that three-dimensional camera view that is used to collect the imagery. That can be a very tricky thing to use, but that's why we want to use the quick starts because it's all done for us already. And you can see how I am going and orbiting around the Chateau Frontenac, um, which is a pretty neat thing. Um, if you want, you can modify this stuff a little bit. Um, if you modify too much, you might end up with some wonky stuff. But let's say I want to, uh, it to end in just a slightly different location. Um, I can do that. And it has actually added a little bit of a swirl here so that when I finally come to a stop, I'm looking at something a little bit different. You can, um, you know, make any of these modifications that you want to do here. But I'm going to call this good. Again, I'm trying to make this not particularly complicated. Um, and I like the views that I'm getting of the Chateau Frontenac. So I'm actually going to pause it right here. And I'm going to click to the next button. It's going to ask me how long should this be. The longer it is, the more space it's going to take, the slower everything is going to be to process. So you might want to consider something between 20 and 40 seconds. Um, not a whole lot more than that. Um, you'll start end, uh, ending up with a lot of problems. You can experiment with that in the second one if you want to. I'm going to pause this too, and I'm going to say OK. And so now this whole thing is here. We can start to mess around with this a little bit, 
But if you mess around with it, very quickly things can degrade. And so, again, for the second um, video, you can try to experiment a little bit. But for the time being, you just might want to play it through again to see if it's working. And now what we can see, we had that 3D camera view before. Now we have what's um, what are called the keyframes down here. And so these keyframes are giving us a whole bunch of data, not only about the longitude and latitude and altitude, but also about things like our camera's position and its target. And you can actually add things to this keyframe, which is one of the things that makes this a very powerful tool. Again, I'm going to pause this, and now I'm going to click Render. That means I'm done with it. So whenever you're ready to be finished, render. And I have found that the best way to render is actually to do it in the cloud. And so do one of these cloud renders as a video MP4. And I'm going to just call it Chateau so that I remember what it is. And then go ahead and you can see how fine it looks down here. It's going to look pretty neat when we're done. Um, I'm going to hit submit. And now it's going to submit this to the cloud rendering. And eventually this is going to come to you in the email account that you're using for this. So we can actually stop now, do something else. Sometimes these renders take a little bit of time, um, but we will come back to this. And when we come back, we're not going to be in Google Earth Studio. We are going to be in Premiere Pro instead. All right, I guess I wasn't entirely truthful with you. I said we would be back in Premiere Pro. But we're stuck in Google Earth Studio, and there's a reason for this. I submitted that video to be rendered, and actually the render failed, which happens from time to time. And so I resubmitted it a couple of hours later, and it rendered very quickly, no problem. I wanted to point out to everyone that if you go up to animation here, and you go down to cloud renders, you can bring up a little window that tells you how your cloud renders are doing. And you can see that actually I had two failed ones right in a row. Those are the ones I tried to do yesterday. But then I did some other, another one, and it worked quickly today. And I downloaded it. It actually came as an email to me um, with a link that I could go ahead and download that. And I did. So I'm ready to go. And now we are ready to use Premiere Pro. So Premiere Pro has come up. And I'm going to start a new project. And as I said, I recommend very strongly that you put your new project into a project folder. So I actually have a separate Google Earth Studio folder um, that I have set up for my uh, various um, Google um, Premiere Pro projects. And so I'm going to call this one Chateau, just like I called the um, video itself, and say OK. And now we're going to come up with a brand new software. And, you know, this software is going to be as confusing as the last one was. But you'll actually see, because it's an Adobe product, there are some similarities to what you get in Illustrator. And so you're not going to be learning from scratch. Um, a really important thing to note is your toolbar is going to look like this. And it's it, it, this is how it comes up in the default for mine. It might, might be slightly different from yours. You're going to have a timeline window. You're going to have something called the program window and a source window. And then down here, you will have the overall project window. And that's where we're going to work first. We're going to say File. And then we are going to Import. And we're going to go to that place where we have the video. And mine should be under this. There it is, Chateau MP4. And I'm going to go ahead and say Open that. And it's going to import that file, and you'll see it comes up here under the project. And now the next thing that you want to do is you want to take that and you want to drag it into your timeline because that's where we're going to do some editing with it. And you'll see it immediately comes up here in the program as well. And that allows us actually to go through and, and decide where we want to pit, put things. And um, graphic elements that we're going to add are going to show up here as well. Um, depending on how long or short your video is, remember mine was, I think, 25 seconds. Um, you know, the timeline might not quite match that, but you can actually expand or contract that so that you can um, get a better sort of sense of, of where you are in the timeline, which is a useful thing to do. 
Now we're going to keep this relatively simple um, for this first video, as I mentioned before. And so what we are going to do is we are going to add just some simple graphics to this. Um, we're going to go up to graphics and say add a new layer. See, we're working in layers again. And I'm just going to add some text. And you can see that the text now appears up here in the program area. So I, I would love to be able to expand this a little bit, but I'm trying to keep it small so it doesn't get too um, big on us. It also shows up in the timeline here, and it just sort of randomly placed this um, back here. So I'm going to actually go back in the timeline and see where this thing, um, where I want to put this. And I'm just gonna, going to have the text say Chateau Frontenac on it. And so let's say I imagine I want it to appear here at maybe, you know, like six or seven seconds. Um, I put that here, and then I can actually take... Um, the end of that text and drag it to where I want it to be. And now you can see where it's appearing and where it's disappearing. And I'm actually going to now shorten it up just a little bit. So it will just appear for this time. And you know, of course, you might want to put in other text layers as well. But again, I'm, I'm going for the simple here. You see that it's added it as a new text layer. If you add a graphic element, um, like a box or an ellipse or something like that, um, you won't have to edit it. But because it's a text layer, you will. And so I'm going to go down to the tool that has text in it right here. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to highlight that layer. And now I can go ahead and I can change it to what I want it to say. Chateau Frontenac. So there we go. Now I'm done with that edit, I believe. So now let's say that we want to change colors and things of, of it. What are we going to do here? Well, now we want to go over to the source. Um, and the source is essentially the source for the bits and pieces that are over here. And since this is the one that's highlighted now, and this is the one I'm on, and by the way, you can lock things. So I can lock this one up. Um, just so I don't end up messing with it like we did in Illustrator. Then I can go over here and I can make different types of edits to it. And, you know, I, I just want to stress that I am not, you know, a huge Premiere Pro person, so I don't know a great deal about it. We're just going to look at some basic things that you can do. Uh, but the first thing and the most obvious thing we can do is just modify the text. Uh, we can change the font. So let's say I don't want it to be Tahoma, um, but I, instead I want it to be Times New Roman and I want it to be bold, then we can turn it into bold. You know, we can do all sorts of things like that. We can change the color of the text as well. Um, and, you know, right now, um, you know, the right now the text is in this sort of whitish color here, but let's say for some reason I want to turn it into a more bluish one. We can go over here and sort of select that color and say, okay. And now we've got that here. And again, you know, we can click out of it to see what it looks like. And now we can see it doesn't show up very well. So I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to re-highlight that text. There we go. And now what I'm going to do, and I find this to be a pretty useful thing to do in Premiere Pro, is I'm going to add a background to it. And for that background, right now it's sort of a gray color, but I'm going to go in and I'm going to keep it sort of bluish, but I'm going to make it sort of a real light blue, super light blue color, like this almost a blue gray color. And so now there's a background too. And again, I can click out of it and I can see what it looks like. And this is probably not ideal, but there you go. I've done it. Um, and I, I want to make it a little bit bigger than the wording. And so I'm going to increase the pixel size of the borders a little bit. And I'm going to click it again and see what I have done. Let's see, maybe make it even a little bit bigger. There we go. I, I guess I needed to make a lot more like 27 pixels or something like that and say, okay. And now if I click the select tool up here, I can go back and I can select this. You'll see it's created some other thing. I'm just going to delete that um, right now. Click on it with the selection tool and delete it. And I'm going to go up here and, and click that Chateau Frontenac. And there are a bunch of different things we can do here. Like we can 
um, make the size of the font and the box larger or smaller if we want to. Um, you could also you rotate it if we wanted to. I don't think I want to rotate this one, but there might be a reason why you want to rotate this text. Um, you can also um, do things like modify. Right now I'm really clicked on, on um, the box, but you can also do things like change it's the target of where you actually want it to be. Um, and you can change the shape of the box and things like that if you want to mess around with that a little bit. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Another really useful thing to do is to go to the very end of the graphic when you get that little um, strange little arrow and bracket thing um, appearing and right click on it. And if you do that, you can go to apply default transitions and you'll see that it's put a little bar there and I'm gonna do it on the other end as well, apply default transitions. And then I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so I can change this in and out and make that default a little bit bigger. And you'll see what it's doing is it's dissolving. And so if we scroll back here, you'll see that it will dissolve in and then it will dissolve out as well. And that's a you know, really useful thing to have just to make your graphics look a little bit better. Okay, so let's imagine that this is what I want. Now, of course, you're going to want to add some more elements and do some other things here. Um, but you don't have to do a lot, especially for this first one. I'm going to save this project, and now I'm going to export it. So from here, I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Export, and I'm going to select Media. And then um, here comes the export box right here. The format that is best to export in is called H264. Um, and that's actually going to produce an MP4, but the way that it compresses the file um, seems to be the most effective. You can actually preview this if you want to, to see what you've created. And I actually don't like where that Chateau Frontenac is um, showing up, but for this, this is good enough. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, you can select where it's going to go as well. You'll see right now it's putting it on my desktop, which is going to be fine. I'll just move it into this folder later on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that export file. And it will take a little bit of time to create this. But if your file is not very big because you've chosen this particular format, it should be fairly quick. Um, and now you'll see that that is done. And I am going to find it on my desktop and I'm going to double click on it. And just give me a second. Um, here it is being played as an MP4. And you can see it looks really good. In fact, as an MP4, um, just sort of raw MP4 like this, it looks better than it's going to end up looking when you um, place it on YouTube later on. So sorry about that. So the next thing that you want to do is actually go to YouTube um, because I want you to take this file and I want you to put it on YouTube so it's publicly available and easy to see. So let me bring YouTube in here. There we go. You should have a YouTube channel um, that you can access through your UAA account. Here's mine. Um, what you want to do, uh, and your channel's right here, so you can see all the videos that you've loaded. You want to go to Create, and then you want to go to Upload Video. And then it will bring up a dialog box for you. And when that dialog box is in, um, you are just going to drag and drop it in there. And you can change its name if you want. You can put it on a playlist. I'm going to put it on what I call Google Earth Studio playlist and say done. Um, you don't have to put it on that. You do have to say it's not made for kids. And then you can click through all this stuff. You can add things if you want to, but you don't need to. And finally, in visibility, probably click on public just so you can show it with anyone you want to. And then say publish. Um, it's going to take a little bit to publish it, so I'm not going to worry about that right now, but you can copy that video link, and that is what I'm going to want you to share with me so that ultimately I can watch it and other people can watch it as well. 
Um, it will take a little bit of time to process, but we don't need to sit through all that. I assure you that this is going to end up working and being effective on my YouTube channel. So that's it for the first video. I'm going to have another video that talk about some of the extensions you can do.